sitting right along ringside. Boy, what a good group we've got in here today. Packed and jammed. Yeah! That's the kind of folks that are just looking forward to a whale of a day of championship wrestling. David. Oh, get ready. we got rock and roll RPMs coming in here. Opening match of the day going against Billy Travis and his partner, Ricky Nelson. That should be a good team, too, we'll be looking at a little bit later on. Get ready, because we got on one side of the ring Jimmy Jack Funk on the other side. You ready for this? Manny Fernandez and Corps going against each other. Right here. There's more, too. Scott Hall and the Nightmare will be involved in the expiration of time match, which will be coming up later on today. All in all, looks like a big day of championship wrestling. We haven't seen wrestling. Scott and uh, the Nightmare together on championship wrestling, have we? Uh, uh, I don't know whether don't we did or we not, but yeah, we will see him. Yeah. One other thing. Terry Taylor will be here today, oh, too. Oh, yeah. I got some questions I want to ask Terry Taylor about a previous match and some things. We'll be getting to him. One big announcement that we have, Dave, and that is the fact that uh, Shawn Michaels, Marty Jannetty, won the AWA World Tag Titles again. I heard that. And so the Midnight Rockers are now the World Tag Champions again, and uh, it's not like they were hard enough to get along with uh, before. Now it'll even be more. We'll be having all of that. It looks like a whale of a day today. Hope maybe you'll stay tuned. Be back in a moment. In and Dave, we're ready for the official announcement. All right, this will be one fall, 10-minute time limit. Introducing out of Atlanta, Georgia, total weight 454 pounds, Mike Davis and Tommy Lane, the Rock and Roll RPMs. And going against them, a total of 438 pounds. Out of Knoxville, Tennessee, Ricky Nelson, and in the ring starting out of Lexington, Kentucky, Billy Travis. Billy starting against Tommy Lane. Well, hey, we got off and running in a hurry here. Everybody, Lane was ready. Uh, Billy Travis was ready. Woo! Big flying press from Billy Travis on Tommy Lane. The uh, RPMs have been a little testy of recent. Things haven't been going exactly. They're, they're not used to not having a title, and it really has gotten in their craw. They have really been nasty in some of the matches we've seen them in. Billy Travis over to the corner of the tag made on his partner, Ricky Nelson. Ricky out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Whoa, look at them work together. Good action. Tommy Lane almost got the referee as he was headed into the ropes. Fired yeah, there by did. Ricky Nelson. Whoa. By Nelson. Mike Davis hollered, kick Tommy. There's a tag, Mike Davis coming in against uh, Rick Nelson. Knoxville, Tennessee is Rick's wrestling address. Davis whip. Look at that leapfrog. Nice, good drop kick. He was a little close, but he had uh, enough oomph behind it. As he put Mike Davis down, Davis right back up again. And upset when he got back on his yes. feet. He didn't like that at all. It made to look bad by young Rick Nelson. Big body slam. Mike Davis of the Rock and Roll RPMs. He dropped down across the front of the shoulder of uh, Nelson. Nelson got up kind of holding that shoulder. Here's a tag made. Rock and Roll RPMs don't give him much time to recover. Off the rope. Clothesline by Tommy Lane. Lane with Nelson in the air. A big body slam again, and Lane drops down. He had that right fist doubled up and got him right in the top of the head. For the RPMs in and out, I tell you, they have been working very, very well, as everybody knows they can. Nobody's ever doubted the ability of this team. Big backdrop from Mike Davis. Now Rick Nelson. Boy, he popped a suplex on him all the way up, and Nelson is starting to wobble in there uh, as he has been pounded around. Double shot with a double elbow. There's a cover by Tommy Lane. Good no. Nelson still had enough to kick out. I thought he might have him. The Rock and Roll RPMs had not been letting up. They had really been working on Nelson. He works his way over to the corner, battling Tommy Lane all the way, and the tag has been made. Oh, Billy Travis coming in. Referee didn't see the tag, apparently. He's sending Billy back, and Rick Nelson's going to have to stay in there. Nelson still hung in there with a mad 
red team of the rock and roll RPM. Look at referee Jerry Calhoun having to get physical to pry Mike Davis off of him. He started the disqualification count and he decided to step in and move him back. And again, a count of one. Nelson, a nice looking young fellow who is trying, I'll tell you that. He has been caught between the proverbial rock and a hard place. Ow! Ooh, did you see his head hit that turnbuckle? Just slammed him right in there, head and shoulder. Uh, there he goes across yeah. the way. Ooh. He slumps down, but he's still trying to fight back. And look at Tommy Lane, rakes him across the eyes. The feet up by Mike Davis, and his head pounded right straight into it. Mike Davis now with a foot on the throat. The referee comes over. He's going to disqualify him, but Davis breaks it right at the last second. Pops a knee upside the head and tags Tommy Lane. Going over to uh, kind of distract Billy Travis over there from jumping in and interfering into it. Nelson was headed that way, too. They were trying to prevent the tag, and they did. So Nelson has to stay in there. He's been in there a long, long time. We're passing the four-minute mark in the match right now. Championship wrestling underway with Dave Brown, Lance Russell at ringside, and what is going to be one of those classic days. We can just feel it in the air. Look at Travis grabs the head, slams the rock and roll RPM together. And now Mike Davis goes for Rick Nelson. Tommy Lane over with Billy Travis. And we've got two separate fights going on here as the referee goes down. Oh, Rick Nelson pushes Davis over. One, two, three. What is this? What an upset! Can you believe Rick Nelson in his first appearance on championship wrestling comes up on the winning team? They're not getting away with this. I'm going to get hell. Marlon, somebody, they're going to watch this game. It's a one, two, three. That's all it was. One, two, three. Mike Davis complaining about the referee being down. And here comes an elated team of Billy Travis. Great, Rick, we're glad to have you here, but boy, what a debut here on Championship Wrestling to get an upset, and if you'll forgive me, I got to tell you, as long as the RPM's been together, never Woo. expected you guys to be able to get to them. Rick, Well, Lance Russell, let me first say it's my pleasure to be here for all these nice people. All you people sitting at home, that's right, baby. The only RPM I know of is on a car. I never seen a wrestler as an RPM, but I got a heck of a partner right here, baby. At an RPM right now, boy, because you're looking at the greatest tag team that ever walked. We held the Southern Tag Belt longer than anybody else ever has. And you know it, Travis. You know how good we are. You know we're the greatest. Okay, you so let's see. We let's see what today. kind of guts you've got. You're all right, Travis. You know what I'm talking about, Yeah, you're all good. Right, you're Let me show you something, brother. Anytime, any place, anyhow, any kind of match. This man on my side. You jump his back, you jump mine, you jump mine, you jump his. Okay, baby. Anytime, baby. Okay, how about a loser leaves town, hot you dog? You got it, anytime. How about a loser leaves right town, hot anytime, dog? Anytime, big boy. Yeah, 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 Billy, they're trying to get you guys okay. into something yeah. here while emotions are hot. You tell them, Lance, no, you no, tell them, well, boy. Just wait a minute, shut Come your on, fat mouth. Come on, first of all, Lance. I, you know how I feel about losing league tails. Well, I yeah, told you, you 1988 would be my year. He, I just met well, Ricky, and we beat these guys fair and square. We got a match coming up with them this week. If you want to lose the league town, brother, you have got it. Well, of course, Rick just came into the territory, so I don't know whether... How about you, Rick? Is that okay with you? Well, I've been looking for a long time for a place to come to showcase my talents and ability that I have. And when I met Billy this morning, I didn't know what kind of partner I had, but I found out today, you two clowns want to lose or leave town? You got it. Anytime. You name it. All right, I'm going to tell you one thing. Don't unpack your suitcase, Smarty, because you're going to be getting out of here quicker than you came in. And I'm going to tell you one other thing, boys. It's going to be a long, hard, bloody Well, now you, you, you guys have challenged. They've accepted, but uh, Eddie, can, hey, Eddie, can we, can we uh, put that stipulation on it? The loser leave town, they both agreed to it. Okay, next time they're going at it, it'll be loser leave town. We're going to take time out. I'll be back in a minute.
special day, yeah, Monday right there at the Evansville Coliseum so that Evansville could have a big night of the Renegade Rampage matches. That's right, seven Rampage tournament matches plus two added matches, and boy, are they something. A loser leave town with Travis and Rick Nelson going against the RPMs and Jimmy Jack Funk, T. Joe Kahn against Manny Fernandez and Jeff you Garrett. You know what, Lance? I got a telegram today. It was from the Raging Bull begging us to, for our forgiveness. But, Bull, you're too late. We gave you your chance, and now your butt is ours. We're going to take it to the limit. We're going to make sure you can never wrestle again. <laughs> you and that little sissy friend of yours, Jeff Garrett, we got her. <laughs> we got something for to play with after we put you in the hospital once and for all. Uh, he'll be enough to go with. You don't have to worry about bringing that or anything else. You'll find out how much he wants to apologize to you. That's money. Introduce uh, the gentleman standing here with me, Terry Taylor, well known to all of the championship wrestling fans around. He's back with a slightly different attitude. Here's a guy who uh, held the World Television Championship and was the champion of all of the world of television wrestling. And he has had quite an illustrious career, as a matter of fact, since the last time that we had had him here. And I've got a question for you. It's about time. Please get to it. Uh huh. The question is, what business did you have jumping in Jerry Lawler and Bill Dundee's match? That's the thing that completely I, I see no reason whatsoever for. Well, Lance, if you'll give me a second to answer this and quit being so long-winded, if I was the world's television champion and the champion of all the world, like you said, how come when I sent my application in and then they said, well, I'm sorry, there's no openings in the Lords of the Ring tournament? So I said, no, if you don't mind. You're out here every week. I'm here now. Okay. So when I get out here, I say, well, I guess I'm going to have to make an example of somebody. Dundee and Lawler, round and round and round for the Lords of the Ring. Well, everybody knows I can beat both of them, which I guess I showed. And they all can just shut up. These people out here make too much noise. Officer, if they don't shut up, please show them out. All right, so I'm out there, and I'm trying to make an example. These two guys are saying... Well, I'm sorry, we don't want to wrestle Terry Taylor because we know we can't beat him. They don't come out and say because this is their hometown. They're scared. I guess I am scary Terry Taylor because everybody's scared to death of me. So you guys, Lawler, Dundee, please sign a contract with me because I'm not going to go out here and waste all these young, upcoming wrestlers that are trying to make a name for themselves. Well, I, if I have to, I will, but it'll be on your hands. Does that answer your question? Well, that tells me uh, one of the reasons that, at least in your mind, that you're back here. The situation is that Bill Dundee has uh, shown no inclination to back up from Terry Taylor, despite your very illustrious background. Dundee had some comments to make about Terry Taylor in a match with him. Oh, Terry Taylor, let me tell you something, brother. Oh, man. I don't know who you think you are or what you think you are if you think you're coming into this area and jumping on the superstar to make a reputation for something I don't know nothing about. I don't even believe you entered the tournament. I don't believe you called Eddie Marlin and said you wanted to wrestle for that ring. Now that's an obsession with me. You ask anybody around here and they'll tell you. That's the thing that Bill Dundee wants the most. And I had it. And don't think I'm over with you, Jerry Lawler, because I done told you I want the ring. And when I get rid of you, Taylor, I'm coming right back to you, Lawler, because I want that ring. But that's enough on you, Kingfish. Terry Taylor, I wouldn't be you for all the tea in China. Oh, yeah, you say you've been to the major leagues. Well, I really don't care about the major leagues. I've been there, and the King's been there, and we've been all over the world, too. But that don't mean nothing, brother, when you're in this area, because this is the best one there is. And the toughest. Every time I I got hurt it's been here and it was guys like you would come back jumping me it did it well i'm just going to tell you something terry oh you're a fine athlete and you're a great wrestler but so is the superstar and if you think you're coming in here then knock me out of that ring you're wrong daddy because it's an obsession with me and i'm walking over everything and anybody to get it so terry taylor when i face you in that ring brother i'm going to beat your brains out punk He's still the same tough Aussie, and he's not afraid of you. Let me let me get down first of all, Dundee. Let's get down on the same level, all right? All right so we're at the same height. I hear you out here stumbling over your words. You're talking to me, and every other word you're tripping on it. Sounds like to me you're a little scared. I thought I heard something knocking. Maybe it was your knees. So Dundee, it doesn't matter. Maybe I got your attention coming in from behind, but I won't have to do it anymore because one on one facing you from behind, from the sides, it doesn't matter. 
because I can whip you in here. You couldn't beat half of me with my other half helping you, and that's all I got to say. Well, you've got a match coming up in the ring, and you'll find that uh, the guy you're facing is a little different size than Bill Dundee, that's for a fact. Don't put Dundee down just because he's little. You know better than that, Terry. Uh, you my dad? My no. mom talks okay. to me like that, not you. Okay. <laughs> Whatever happened to the Terry Taylor that I knew and loved. All right, Dave, let's have the introduction. All right, we got a one fall, 10 minute time limit match coming up here out of Apopka, Florida. 250 pounds, Ron Bruce, and going against him at 237 pounds out of Vero Beach, Florida, Terry Taylor. One fall, 10 minute time limit, Jerry Calhoun, the referee. Uh, we've heard the conversation about folks that let uh, fame and fortune go to their head. I'm not so certain that that isn't exactly a classic example, just handing his robe outside the ring. We're ready for the action. Young fella Ron Bruce has got all the fit. He and his brother Don, identical twins, have all the physical attributes that a person could possibly want. Experience is the important thing. This uh, Ron is one of the Bruce Brothers, Blue Denim Bruce Brothers, that we have said sponsored by the Sawyer Bound Group, which is an unusual circumstance in itself, Davey. Indeed. But they see the uh, potential there, and there's plenty of it. But as you pointed out, experience would have to be heavily on the side of Terry Taylor in this match. He not only has been in it a, a, a much longer time than, of course, Ron Bruce has, but he has been in with all of the heavyweights. I mean, the big ones. Oh, he's feeling full of himself right now. Simple, basic move, and Taylor is making like that is uh, one of America's great discoveries as he hooked that arm up and took Ron Bruce over and down. Oh. Uh, what, what's he saying? He said, you can give up now if you want to. It's no disgrace. <laughs> oh, yes. Big Ron Bruce tangling in. Scoop from Taylor. Body slams him. Puts him right down. Oh, Gives us a little pose, huh? What, what do you think? Pose here, yeah. Yeah, it, Terry's treating this as a workout and a not very vigorous workout at that. Is this the same guy that uh, we saw several years ago, Dave? I don't know. Tie it up again. Terry Taylor, Ron Bruce. This time, Bruce scoops Taylor up. Slams him down. From way up there, 6'6 six, six or 6'7, six, he can put you up in the air. And Taylor comes up a little irritated. Maybe he realizes now it's not going to be just a workout. I think you're right. Very little bit uh, more concerned, not quite as overconfident as he was a few moments ago. He backs Ron Bruce into the corner, swings a right fist, but it's blocked. Ron blocked it with that left forearm. Now ah, Taylor maybe thinking, hey, maybe I'm in a match for real here. Boy, one thing about being as big as Ron Bruce is you can really get some leverage, and, and he did, in fact. Look at that. He's turning Taylor over. But look out. Terry Taylor backs Ron Bruce over into the corner. And as he steps back and away, it was a clean break. Give him that. Referee Jerry Calhoun, Championship Wrestling. Dave Brown, Lance Russell at ringside. Big action already started out today. The RPMs got upset in our opening match by the uh, first-time team of Billy Travis and Rick Nelson. So you've already missed that. We have got scheduled Jimmy Jack Funk Manny Fernandez coming up later we've also got Scott Hall the nightmare Ken Wayne he'll be here Terry Taylor Ron Bruce tangling it right now on a one fall 10 minute time limit match Taylor bangs him pretty good comes right up to the face and again another right hand Taylor's hit him with a fist twice there he goes through the ropes Taylor throws him out on the floor Terry grabs him Pops him again with a right fist. Referee says, hey, I'm going to disqualify you if you don't get back in the ring. Taylor rolls Ron back under the ropes. Again, the right fist. Ron Bruce answering with a fist. Staggers Taylor. Taylor down on the mat saying, oh, wait a minute. Let's don't do it this way. Whoa. Well, look at that. 
Now there is experience. Illegal. Well, it really, I don't know whether it was or not. I'd have to go back and look at the tape on that. But Taylor, oh, he DDTs him. Now there was inexperience. He didn't pay attention to Taylor when he was climbing in. And Ron Bruce, as he stuck his head through, Taylor grabbed him immediately and popped the DDT to him. And Taylor comes out the winner in the match with Ron Bruce. Four minutes, ten seconds the time. Referee uh, over helping and consoling, I'm sure, Ron Bruce. Nothing uh, to be ashamed of there as he gave Terry Taylor a good go in there, but he made a bad mistake, and that's inexperience. Jimmy Jack Funk and T. Joe Kahn, his buddy. Out I come out here to say one thing. They got me ready, uh, scheduled to wrestle one of my all-time best friends, the Raging Bull. I'll tell you what, Manny Fernandez, I, the Raging hey, Bull that I know would never be a sissy lover, would never turn his back on a friend. I'll give you 30 seconds to come out here and I'll forgive you. I'll forgive you for everything you've done if you come out here right now and make a public apology to me on national TV. You're going to give him 30 seconds to apologize That's to you. That's right. I think he got hit in the head. The raging bull I know would never turn his back on me. Yeah, well, I know who hit him, too. Look you got this man right here. Yeah, yeah, this guy right here. <laughs> He's the one. Does he look like a sissy? He's not no sissy. Come on, bull. Your time's running out, bull. I don't think he has any intention Your of coming out. Your running out, bull. Jimmy Jack Funk trying to make he an ultimate. He better get out of here. He better get out of here right now. Hey, come on. Come out here. Oh, hurry that clock up. Hey, 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 hey. You hey, got hey, 10 hey, seconds, no. Bull. 10 uh, seconds. You better get out of here. You better get out of here. You better get out of here now. You better get out of here. Okay, that's it. Uh, bull, that's uh, it. Uh, We've had it. Your history. We're going to take you, and we're going to cripple you. Don't put hey, your hands hey, in my face. Don't Jimmy. put your hands Don't in my face. Come around here, get out of here, Bull. I'm going to get, get in that ring right now. Out. You got him coming in a ring. Hey, just get out of here. Wait. The match is not scheduled right now. Don't start all that stuff. We'll get the match scheduled when it's going in. We don't have to sit here and listen to this. Hey, come on. We're going to take a break. I don't need to play. Will you guys just have... Yeah, Jimmy Jack Funk and Terry Taylor are going to be the next match. Jimmy Jack Funk and Terry Taylor. Hey, big news. Yowza. Monday night first. Remember that. Evansville Coliseum. Not Wednesday, but because of the special Rampage night. Seven matches and two added matches. It's going to be on Monday night in the Coliseum. And let me tell you, this is just the first of what is going to be a series that will run all the way through June. Are you listening to this? 250000 bucks the renegade people have put up to have this expansive tournament in there. Now, you're going to have such things as Bill Dundee and Tommy Lane of the RPMs. You'll be seeing Jimmy Jack Funk and Scott Hall think that won't be a dandy and a half. 7.30 is the start time because of the number of matches in there. Also, a loser leave town, obviously not part of the renegade rampage, Travis and Rick Nelson against the RPMs. And listen to this. Jeff Jarrett, the Raging Bull, going against Jimmy Jack Funk and T. Joe Kahn. All of that regular price is coming up Monday night, Evansville Coliseum. That's the uh, music that brings out the Raging Bull, and after all the conversation that Jimmy Jack Funk had out here, calling him a sissy lover and saying he challenged him to come jump in the ring. Boy, I don't know about that Funk. I think this guy is three, and I really thought he was. You know something, Mr. Microphone? Uh, all your life, when you grow up, you grow up as an individual. You come in this world as an individual. You learn to make decisions on your own as an individual. You know, I walked down that path for a long time. A lot of people always come up to me and say, Manny, why'd you do what you did? Well, I did what I did because that's the way I am. And Jimmy Jack Funk, when I do things and I do it my way, you're going to find out it's a bull's way or no way, Jack. Because I know one thing. I made a lot of mistakes in my life, maybe you have and a lot of other people have. Yeah, we are. But when we decide to take an oath, Daddy, and that oath was liberty and justice for all. Well, the injustice I'm fixing to do is upon you and T.J. Khan. Because when you stick your nose in my business, you've done messed up, Daddy. That is risky business. 
And when it comes to risky business, nobody handles it like the bull. And nobody does it like the bull, baby. So you can go out and you can call me a sissy lover, which I may be. You know what I'm saying? I may be, but I may be liking to be a sissy. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes to me getting in that squared circle, baby, you walk that out. You strut that strut and you talk that talk. But when you get in that ring, you better do what your big mouth says you can do. Because I know one thing, I can do a lot of things I say I can do, and I can do a lot worse when I get mad. So Jimmy Jack Funk, you're about getting me mad. You know what I'm saying, Lance? You have seen me out here, I'm not a nice guy. I like to come out here and rock a few people, because I will rock you, Daddy. And when it comes to that, baby, it's only rock and roll. And when it's rocking and rolling, I am the rocker. So you can get out here and you can get in the street. Hey, you know what? Let me tell you something. Nothing gives me greater pleasure than a good challenge, baby. The agony of defeat. That's what it's called. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. The raging bull, Manny Fernandez. Dave, batting them down, baby, because I think we got one and a half coming right here. Oh, uh, stand by for this one. Jimmy Jack Funk out of Amarillo, Texas. Also out of Texas, raging bull, Manny Fernandez, head-to-head, toe-to-toe, the bell sounds. And here we go. Oh, uh, Jimmy Jack <laughs> Funk got him low. Jimmy Jack. About 263. Look at Fernandez. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. Big drop kick from the bull. Grabs that arm, takes him over and down. Manny's at 250 and Jimmy Jack at 263 of fury. I mean, all of it. Those two guys going in there, and you could just tell by the way they were talking and feeling, you could feel the heat and the vibration. Look at that Fernandez. Puts Jimmy Jack down with the big chop, the third one of the series. Manny Fernandez, the raging bull, against Jimmy Jack Funk. All of this got underway. Manny Fernandez felt like that T. Joe Kahn and Jimmy Jack had taken unfair advantage and done all the damage they needed to do to Jeff Jarrett and Manny came in he didn't jump on Funk he didn't jump on T. Joe he was just rolling Jarrett out of the ring and T. Joe took a shot at uh, Manny and he just missed himself by a shot at Jimmy Jack Funk boy look at Funk take advantage of it did he? yeah Fernandez came in with a drop kick too high and Funk took immediate advantage of the mistake couple of the most rugged guys you're going to find anywhere. Mm. And that when they ran together early in the match, it was like a couple of freight trains head on. There's that clothesline for Jimmy Jack Funk and a zipping right hand. Funk covers him. One. Fernandez kicks the left shoulder up, breaks the count. Referee Jerry Calhoun in a precarious place with these big bodies flying around. Fernandez back kicks Funk, but he doesn't slow him down much. Jimmy Jack just stays right on him, rips across the eyes. Fernandez kind of staggering around the ring with his eyes shot like that. He got him with a huge clothesline. Both of them are down. Jimmy Jack on his back. Fernandez now comes up on his knees. Referee on the count, nobody is up and able to continue, and the referee continues the count. Manny Fernandez to one knee and now back on his feet. He has the chance, if he wants to take it, to try to get a cover on Jimmy Jack Funk right now. Boy, I think that would have been the wise move to go immediately for the cover. I'm not so sure his head was all that clear, Davey. I think uh, he had been jarred around in there because he was staggering before he caught him with that clothesline. Count of two. Manny Fernandez backs Funk into the ropes, whips him across. Oh, that flying burrito. Boy, he reached up and, I mean, popped him hard. What in the Sam Hill is that that he's got on his hand? He just stabbed Fernandez. We can't get it now, we can see it. Pop that Iggy to him right in the throat, and I mean nailed him hard. 
T.J. Khan with an awesome looking glove fires it right to the throat of Manny Fernandez again. Jimmy Jack Funk getting in his shot. This match is officially over on a disqualification of Jimmy Jack Funk. For the interference by T. Joe Khan, he's got a metallic looking glove. It reminds you, what was his name? I can't think of that uh, horror movie that uh, Freddy Krueger. Yeah, Freddy Krueger, yeah. right. That's what it looks like. And he is jabbing, jabbing Fernandez right in the throat. And now, Jimmy Jack Funk gouging at the nose, the eyes. Once again, T. Joe Khan slaps that Iggy with him with that vicious looking glove that he's got on. Jimmy Jack grabs his bell now. I don't know. Puts the noose around Manny's yeah. neck. Fernandez needs some help out. He's caught in between. Here comes Jeff Jarrett with a broom in his hand, and he blasted Jimmy Jack Funk. T. Joe and Funk take off. It's Jeff Jarrett who had the help from Fernandez when he was at the hands of Jimmy Jack and T. Joe Khan, Eddie Marlin, Randy Hales out. They're trying to get that rope off the neck of Manny Fernandez. Manny foaming at the mouth as uh, he was attacked by T. Joe Khan with that weird looking glove, that metallic looking thing that he had on. He just kept pounding Manny right in the throat with it. They've got him out of the ring now and trying to pick him up to get him back for a little first aid to him. Manny Fernandez is, is the winner of the match, Davey. Yeah, by the disqualification, the time of the match officially, three minutes, 13 seconds, but then the action continued for a couple of more minutes after that. Yeah, much, much, much too much for Manny Fernandez, and Jeff Jarrett came in with a common, everyday, good old household broom, and boy, he got a shot on Jimmy Jack with that thing. Funk and Tijo took off. We're going to take time out. we got more action coming up in a moment. at the other Blue Denim Brews brother, Don Brews, as he'll be going in against a brand new car. We want to get gorgeous Gary Young, who's coming in here with us, his first appearance on our championship wrestling, and we've heard a lot about him, but we've never had him here before. Well, I'm going to make it short and sweet. You know, I'm out here for only one reason, and that's to win. There's four guys in this area right now that are the top-notch guys. Big Scott Hall, you got me coming. Jeff Jarrett, pretty boy Jeff Jarrett, He's got your fancy poster, you got me coming. Superstar Bill Dundee, you done been beat by Terry Taylor, but you got me too. And then the King. The King who's going after all the world titles. Well, King, keep your eyes on me, Daddy, because I'm coming your way. I'm going to do the rest of my talking in the ring. Well, that's what we're here for, and we're looking forward to seeing Don Brews going against uh, Gary Davey. If you want to give him the official stuff. All right, it's one fall, 10-minute time limit match, and Don Brews, the brother of Ron Brews, you saw earlier, they're identical twins, as we mentioned, out of uh, Apopka, Florida. 251 pounds. And he's going against gorgeous Gary Young. Out of Houston, Texas, Young also weighs in about 250. So weight-wise, they're about the same size. Bruised with a height advantage. Young uh, wrestled a lot in the UWF territory with uh, Terry Taylor. He was down in that area. And uh, he has quite a reputation coming in here. Whoa! He went right underneath and dumped Don Bruce over. Have to take a good close look to be sure that's Don, not Ron. Boy, they are hard to tell apart. They sure are. Referee Jerry Calhoun telling Young to open the fist up as a reverse and a whip. Monkey flip! And gorgeous Gary gets sailed across the ring by the Blue Denim Bruce brother, Don. He's complaining, used hair, used hair. And if he did, 
Nobody in this room saw it. And again, you have that same great physical ability that Don Bruce has. Big, tall youngster, strong, 250, 51 pounds. Gorgeous Gary whips him into the rope. Shoulder puts Young down on the mat over the top. Hey, Bruce looking good here. Keeping good balance, and uh, as Young tries to set himself, Bruce just knocked him down to the mat twice. Mm, big knee lift, right, right under the chin. That's how tall Gary Young is. Uh, we're talking about the height of uh, the Bruce brothers, but Young is a tall one, too. Yeah, that uh, is sometimes deceptive uh, in that respect, because Young is big. And he just happens to be in there with a fellow that's about 6'6". Six, six. Whip. Oh, Don holds up. Puts a foot. Good move for a young fella. You know, it's amazing. You still have a lot to learn, but it's amazing how quick you learn some things when you get into professional wrestling, Dave. <laughs> some things it only takes once. Yeah. Jerry Calhoun wants him away from the ropes in the turnbuckle. Oh, oh boy. Inexperience again. We yeah. saw it in the match with his brother, and then that time he just went in there too fast. And, yeah, he uh, got carried away with his success over in this corner. He whipped him across and just tried to come in too tight, too quick. And gorgeous Gary Young took care of him. Look at that! Nice Great move! move. Got him down. Count of two is all he can make stick. Reversal by Young. Count of two. He they got, got him. Wow. What a turn of events, huh? Man, I'll tell you, and there was a situation where Don Bruce trying to get out of it instead of getting under the rope, which uh, he wasn't that far away and as tall as he is. The winner is going to be gorgeous Gary Young. More in just a moment. <laughs> Monday, boy, and I'm telling you what, you don't want to miss it because we got seven Renegade Rampage matches plus two added matches. One of them is a loser leave town match, in which Billy Travis, oh, Rick Nelson are going to be in there against the RP. And well, it just gets tougher in '88. Well, you know, I got a new partner here, and the first thing we're going to do a loser leave town is against RPM. So I told you once, Lance, we're not backing down from anybody. Well, Mr. RPMs, Mike Davis, and Tommy Lane, well, you better be ready in Evansville because we're going to take you out. Hope to see both of you guys around for a while. We'll find out after Monday night, Jeff. We saw a little bit earlier in here, T. Joe and Jimmy Jack Funk, they will do anything to get rid of the bull or to get rid of you. That's right. They're going to do their darn best right there in Evansville. You know, guys, you're real tough when it's two on one. Well, this week in Evansville, it's going to be two on two and me and the bull. And I guarantee he's not apologizing for anything he did, and I'm not going to right. apologize for anything I've done. You guys, you better gear up. I don't care if you bring your bull rope or your big, big metal glove. Jeff Jarrett and the Raging Bull are coming at you two on two. Is the brand new AWA World Tag Champions. Let's hear some comments from them. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce to you the two-time AWA World Tag Team Champions, Marty Gennetti and Shawn Michaels, the Midnight Rockers. My buddy came out here last week and said there's one thing on the Midnight Rockers' mind, and that's the World Tag Team titles. And like a flash, the Midnight Rockers took care of business, and became, for the second time, the World Tag Team Champions. You know, up north, the Midnight Rockers are loved. Well, let's go ahead and say it. Worshipped by the people up there. And the first thing the people of the South try to do to the Rockers when they get the World Tag Titles is try to take them away from us by putting us in a no-disqualification match against that big spooner, Scott Hall, and that nightmare, and I'll tell you what, nightmare is a thing, that is an ugly young man, I must say, Kenny Wayne. Well, I'll tell you what, Memphis and the whole South, the Midnight Rockers are the AWA Wrestling Tag Team Champions. No other team in the world can do what the Midnight Rockers do in the ring. And that is professional wrestling. And now you're throwing us into a no disqualification match where everything goes. 
Well, that doesn't settle with the Midnight Rock. Oh, don't forget, it's a world title match, right? Oh, yeah. And, you know, world you people in the match. South, you treat us, we're champions now, and you're treating us like this. Well, Big Scott Hall and Nightmare Kenny Wayne, you guys are going to suffer the wrath of the Midnight Rockers, and we're going to prove to everybody why we are number one. And we've already proved it. Everything we say, we do. So Big Scott Hall and Nightmare Kenny Wayne, you get ready for the world champs, because they're coming for you. Uh, he's talking about confidence. Oh, yeah. Hockey is the word. Forget well, that is the word. Thing. Right. Uh, we got a match coming up here. Expiration of time, match day. Mad Dog in the ring right now. Rodney Knapper is his partner. Saw Rodney for the first time last week on Championship Wrestling. Hadn't seen Mad Dog in some time in this area. He's back. He's going to be going against, or they are going to be going against, the team of Big Scott Hall and Nightmare Ken Wayne. Total weight of Scott Hall and the Nightmare 502, and on the other side of the ring, the total weight 502. That's unusual. Got two tag teams and the total weight the same on both sides. Jerry Calhoun, the referee. You also have Nate the Rat, uh, uh, Nate the Great, over in uh, the corner of Mad Dog and Rodney Napper. Mad Dog starting against Ken Wayne. Expiration of time match here. Napper we saw in his debut here going against Manny Fernandez and that's a rugged assignment <laughs> in any way you cut it. Uh, Napper is a stocky young man. Mad dog. As Scott Hall drops that 287 down across him. Boy, he is big and powerful. He is. Well, Mad Dog came out here. He was yelling at the crowd. He was confident they were going to take this one quick. Well, he's not doing too well right now. Scott Hall sits down on that left leg again. Bag made. Nightmare. Ken Wayne over the rope. Down with a boot. Mad Dog dropped off his feet by Ken Wayne. Mad Dog weighs just under 300 pounds. You know, uh, we've, we've gotten ourselves in a position. I think we may have to take a break uh, coming up right about now as our time's running out. Uh, what Do we want to get a break and come back and join the match again? Kenny Wayne holding on to that foot. No, we just stay with it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that brought uh, Nate the Great out of his seat. Scott Hall shoves Mad Dog back to the corner and says, all right, come on, let's uh, get Rodney Knapper in here for a while. Rodney, that's not going to work, sir. No, no. Uh -huh. Trying to pick up Big Scott Hall. Now, the other way around, it does work. Big Scott Hall body slammed Rodney Napper. I don't think he read the instructions before he got into this <laughs> match. <laughs> You're right. Boy, I am telling you, he tried to pick Scott Hall up, and it was like Hall was screwed down to the mat down there. Hall reversed it around, as Dave said, and he popped Napper up in the air and banged him down. Tag on Ken Wayne, the nightmare. Ken says, yeah, go ahead and break clean, and I'll take over. And he does with a side headlock. Two and a half minutes coming up in this one. Expiration of time match. Ken Wayne shoulders down. Napper rolled him down there. Could not hold him for the three count. Mad Dog thinking about sneaking into the ring. Referee saw him, sent him back. the rope with a powerful shoulder butt. Ken Wayne, the nightmare. Now back to the headlock. Napper trying to shake him by throwing him into the rope. Ken Wayne moves him over. Count is one, two, but the right shoulder comes up at the two count. I think Ken Wayne probably released a little pressure on the shoulders because Mad Dog was starting in and Ken was turning to make sure he didn't get jumped from behind. Scott Hall. The Nightmare will be challenging for the World Tag Titles coming up soon. Bang! Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Well, I think you can see from watching Scott Hall operate here that uh, it's going to be a good match when they challenge for Look the at this. Look at this, too. Dave. 
Ken Wayne up on the shoulder of Scott Hall, leaps off. That's going to be it. He really landed right on it. Big bang from Ken Wayne and Scott Hall. Time out. We'll come back and recap it for you. Nightmare Ken Wayne as they came up with the victory in that match against Mad Dog and Rodney Napper. Boy, I'll tell you, with Kenny up on top there, he needed an oxygen mask. He was coming. You notice he almost took the lights out. <laughs> he was up so high, but it was certainly effective. Got the pin. One, two, three. The big news? Well, there's been a lot of big news. Jimmy Jack Funk and Manny Fernandez had a go, and we had an interference uh, in here today as, as uh, T. Joe Khan had that special glove on. But the big wrestling news around is the AWA World Tag Titles have been taken away by the former champions, the Midnight Rockers, Shawn Michaels, Marty Jannetty. That doesn't make them any more lovable. I swear to you, these guys are as talented as anybody I've ever seen, but they have got to be the cockiest two individuals I've ever seen. They are the new World Tag Champions, and we'll have to congratulate them for that. Here's a guy that I want to see with that single belt around his waist before my days go <laughs> into history books. Uh, Jerry Lawler, the king. Well, Lance, I, uh, hope to, I hope to make your day one of these days, and it would certainly make mine, too. You know, one of the things that has made my day has been winning this big ring in that Ooh, Lord of the I Rings guess. tournament. And uh, it has given me the opportunity to uh, get a shot at Kurt Henning the AWA World Heavyweight Champion, and of course it is going to be a special stipulation in that match. The ring is going to be at stake against the belt. So in other words, uh, if I don't win the belt, I'm going to lose this big $10,000 diamond ring. Now, boy, I've, had, I've had some matches in the past for the World Heavyweight Championship, but never an added incentive like this. So now, you know, uh, uh, I could not only not win the championship, but I could lose this big $10,000. That's right. As a matter of fact, if he got disqualified, you don't win the title, and he ends up with a ring and a whole bad news right That's there. right. So that makes this uh, match Woo. really, I think they want to try to get a shot of this over here if we oh, can, okay. Lance. Yeah. Uh, I almost have to get a U-Haul trailer to kind of put, put on this thing. Or my, or my, before long, my arm, my right arm is going to be look like one of those orangutan arms, the way it hangs down there with the weight on it. But anyway, it's a, it's a fantastic ring, and, and it's given me the opportunity for another shot at the World Heavyweight Championship. And uh, we all know about Kurt Henning. He's tough. He's a great wrestler. But he takes shortcuts, Lance, and I'm not going to give him the opportunity to take a shortcut in this match. I'm going to, you know, there's not many more title matches uh, on the horizon for me. I've had my share, and I've got to make good on this next one. So that's exactly what I'm going to try okay, to do. Okay, Pat. Now, listen, uh, what when we of, get... What a lot of talent in the area now. Oh, there's are you kidding? In here. Terry Taylor coming in. What a great attitude he's got. I asked Dave, whatever happened to this guy? Yeah, he's hot about that he didn't get accepted. Yeah. He told me that he really thought that you and Dundee talk to the promoters and wouldn't accept it. They just simply told him the truth. There wasn't room in the tournament, so he's uh, kind of looking for it right now. Jerry, we'll straighten him out shortly. Okay, I want to talk to you later sometime, not today, about the Renegade Rampage. When you start talking about $250,000, everybody pays a bitch. Okay, good luck to you, Jerry. We'll see you later. Davey, we got little time left. Maybe you can give us a quick recap. I just want to mention the upset that we had today. Billy Travis and Rick Nelson, his new partner, first time in the territory, as they upset rock and roll RPMs. As a result, next time they meet, they'll be in loser-leave-town match. So yeah, big upset here today. Uh -huh. Big challenge, and boy, it didn't take them long to uh, accept it either. For Dave Brown, Lance Russell saying bye-bye, everybody. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of championship wrestling.